welcome to the OCW Fed state of OCW Fed <laughs> address. The JCS, uh, you know, owner founder, yada yada yada. Basically, this is just a quick video, uh, not really a podcast, just to give you some information regarding what's happening with OCW currently, especially in regards to the new season that is coming up like readily, like right now. So if you didn't notice, we updated the handbook a, a bit. We went through a bunch of changes in the handbook. I'm talking like a lot of changes. Staff and I just kind of poured over the old season 12 handbook, even compared notes to the older handbooks, like from, you know, 10 and, and 11 and nine or whatever. Long story short, we made some minor changes. They're kind of important though. And the reason, you know, we're having this little state of the fed address, so to speak, is because we had an influx of rookies that came in recently the last couple of days, like a lot of rookies, especially on PlayStation 4. And while they're using the old rule set, we need to make it apparently clear that, you know, the new stuff is is what's happening right now. So everyone has to make sure that they're updated accordingly. It takes about five minutes. It's not a big deal. But again, I wanted to make sure that everybody's on the same page because this season, even less handholding. And we know it's complicated sometimes, so we're trying to make it as simple as possible so that the only thing you really have to do is just work a couple of matches, get the go, get the flow to go with, and bada bing, bada boom, easy peasy lemon squeezy, and you're done. So with that being said, you're now watching basically another video that's going to be coming in the pipeline, which is the uh, FPR video, how to do it right and whatnot. So this is just a couple of scenes from it, and you would learn eventually you know, some do's and don'ts or just how to have a good match without looking like an asshole. Anyway, uh, I also had some other things regarding like Riot and, and the anniversary show. Maybe we'll leave that for later, but let's get on to the nitty gritty. You're going to hear clicking uh, because again, I'm using all kinds of gadgets and rigmaroles and all kinds of all, all kinds of other things. So anyway, here we go. Bada boom. Now. This is the main site and all its beautiful, weird glory. Mature audiences, yes. I look at our sponsors and friends and people and the pay-per-views and yada, yada, yada. But that's not what we care about right now. By the way, this is this needs to be updated. Cassidy, please update this. Thank you. Anyway, so we're here. The shoot books, which is being used. Go to the handbook. Bang. Now. We've made a bunch of changes to the handbook. And if you, oh, here's another thing too. If you notice when you go on the handbook, for some reason it automatically brings you to the bottom, which is you know tier four. Just scroll up. It's, it's an issue with forms and how they work. So that's just you know deal with it. Okay, boom. So basically we start here. This is the season thirteen handbook uh, and uh, you know all the stuff you need to know and this that and the third. And yeah, so basically what we are, our mission statement, and what we provide, what we bring to the table, and yeah, so boom. And now the call stat rules, that's the that's the one that's kind of the important one. We switched this between getting started before used to be getting started, then call creation. Now we went straight to just call creation because that's the most important part. Once you get that going, the rest kind of falls into place. We have the new season 13 rules. They're in the hand. They're in the handbook. So all you gotta do is click this little link, and you'll hear a lovely voice, and that'll be the lovely voice of uh, Cassie Hayes. And that's what we're about. So we're gonna do that right now. Bang. And basically, yeah. So uh, oh, look at all this good stuff. Boom. Close that. So moving on to basically put it in simple terms. Watch the video. It's it's two minutes and 17 seconds. So just watch it. Don't you know? Don't be a dick. Just watch the video. Now. As far as the rules go, here are the, the changes that we've made. No attribute above 85, except in the sense that if you are, excuse me, microphone, if you are a you know light heavyweight, you can use one attribute and uh, as in, in the 90, and you can see below to find out which ones you can put. No stat under 55. You know what that means? Nothing. If it's a 50, you're gonna get punched in the dick by me. If it's a 40, you're gonna get expelled from the site. So don't do that. CHW and uh, LHW, one stat. The stats you have are aerial, aerial offense, range, springboard, movement, or agility. One of these can be 90. 
this is all covered in the video but i just wanted to go through it here as well quickly because there's some points that weren't missed or weren't hit rather hit point ratio must be left default 25 25 25 if you are found to be fiddling with this in any sense of the capacity you will be suspended why because messing with this messes with your car in a not good way and it's not cool so don't do it no super heavyweight allowed unless by staff or legacy character what's a legacy character well you know someone who's been a super heavyweight since day one i'm talking about 2006 you know 2000 when we first started a legacy character mainly applies to people in the past not so much you know now so a legacy character would be an example that many of you may not know sideshow the clown would be considered super heavyweight Patalomai would be considered uh, considered a super heavyweight uh who else who else who else you know that's the one, that's one I can think of right now. As far as current generation heavyweights, super heavyweights, you have K. D'Angelo, and uh, the retired now super fat Jacob Trance. Those are considered legacy characters. If you want to be a super heavyweight, you need to be cleared by staffers. So that means you need to talk to me or anyone else on staff. Ask them if you can be super heavyweight, and they'll let you know yes or no. If they say no, tough banana sandwiches titties. That's it. No ifs ands or buts. Maybe later down the road we can revisit it. But until then, no. Now, next one. No female heavyweight allowed unless by staff. Same same principle. Because now, in the new game, you can up your female cause to be basically heavyweight. Which means that no other female other than a heavyweight female will be able to lift them without significant investment in the strength stat. So, to circumvent this, we're going to make sure that any female, the same with the males, the same rules apply. For example, the only there's only two super heavyweights currently in OCW as far as females go, and those are Bertha Stiglitz, who actually fought a man at Summerside many years ago, and the Amazing Pine, who was billed at 375 pounds. So yes, if you're not those two people, you cannot be a super heavyweight unless you ask. So please, by all means, ask. And again, if you're told no, suck it. Attributes and abilities must be realistic to your call. If you have questions, ask staff. Basically, you know, use common sense with your with your attributes and abilities. There's certain things that you shouldn't do. If, for example, if you are, I don't know, an Olympic gold medalist call, you don't want to max out kicks and arm damage and arm offense. You know, use your noodle. Dirty pin his heels only. Again, simple semantics. What face uses uh, heels other than, I mean, what face uses dirty pins other than Eddie Guerrero, rest in peace. So yeah, using Moo Thief is not recommended. Again, this comes to speak, this is, you know, these rules are done because of the few, not the many. So take note about that. Uh, if it's part of your gimmick or if you make it part of your gimmick over time, then sure, by all means. But it should very, it should be used sparingly. So please show some respect. Springboard ability is for cruiser and light heavyweight only slash legacy only. Now in the in the Casada video, it just mentioned cruiser and light heavyweight. Basically, this this just applies to maybe one or two people who are springboarding. And but when I say springboarding, I mean like a springboard job kick since 2007. Basically, if that's the only springboard for a legacy character, I'm not too hu I'm not huge on it. But I'm not gonna circumvent the character, you know, for something like that. So just keep in mind. If you're not cruiser or light heavyweight or a legacy character who used to do it in 2007, you're out of luck. Don't do it. All abilities are capped at level 2, except ring escape. See below. Ring escape is set to level 1 only. As is mentioned in Cass uh, Cassie's video, we will know if you're using above level 1 because your stamina will not go down. And if it does, you're in deep, deep, deep crap. Ooh, honky horns. Great. You're allowed four abilities. Champions are allowed six. Oh, that's crazy. No, it's not because basically they're getting comeback resiliency. So that's that's four, uh, five and six. So eh. uh, champions are receiving resiliency level one as well as legends are receiving resiliency level one. For those of you who are new, this really doesn't mean anything to you. But for those of you from last year and the season previously, basically seasons E12 and 11, this change is actually huge for... Uh, for a number of reasons first reason is because champions no longer have a stat advantage they just have a slight ability advantage basically comeback and resiliency so the field is a little bit lower a little bit even playing field and now resiliency one is basically tied to a finisher so proper use of strategy can yield better results so you never know okay 
rookies can only use one finisher until they become a wrestler. This is a no, you guys know this already. So just reiterating it one more time to make it simple and to the point. When you become a wrestler, it's actually a promotion. It's actually kind of like uh, you earn something. So you earn that extra finisher. Again, now uh, your call will be subject to random wellness violations. That's Casada. A lot of people are asking, what the hell is Casada? What does that mean? Well, I'm not sure. What is Casada? So that's what it is. It's basically our form of wellness testing. So if you piss hot, there's going to be problems. Your, your call will be investigated rigorously. Basically, that's why you have to upload your call. No, no, this there's there's no way to get away with with uh, uh, shenanigans. We will find out. And if we're suspecting shenanigans, that's even worse, because if we're suspecting shenanigans and you're trying to play it cool and you know you're being dirty, you're going to get found out. And when you do, it's not going to be fun. So please, by all by all means, do not be on that shade life. Keep it real. Keep it 100. Work on honor system. Be honorable. It's a good thing. First events, you get a warning if we're feeling if we're feeling uh, charitable or a seven day suspension based on the severity. So if it's something minor, like, you know, he had 86 or like a, a 54 or maybe, you know, you, you an 86 by mistake or whatever. Yeah. Or uh, maybe like you had bring a pin. What is it? Pin diving pin at three or whatever. You know, you maybe slap on a wrist. Who knows? Second offense, 14 days suspension. No, no question about it. Third offense, 21 day suspension. Fourth offense, you, you know, you're getting, it says demotion and remo removal from shows. That basically means we're not going to book you. But in all of these suspensions, if you have, if the pay-per-view is coming up, you're, you're not going to make the pay-per-view or the show. So just don't be a dick, please. Make my life, uh, make our lives easier. Uh, the finisher moveset limitation. There hasn't been really any changes to this other than we added uh, the following. Uh, Dupree, we added the new legends, basically Dupree, Paul Pugh, and Trance. So just take a look at those when you get a chance. Getting started, we actually made the most changes too to help you know, help out rookies. So basically, uh, the changes are that you know we'll look over your application. You accept you become a rookie. That's a given. Once promoted to a rookie, you have the roll call thread. We tell you now you go to the roll call thread and put in your contact availability. Once you register in the roll call, roll call, roll call thread, you then contact FPR, which is basically at this moment, uh, 2017 of October. It's basically Tiberius Dupree, Mr. Sensation on Xbox One, and Dennis Black, Sebastian Abbott on PlayStation 4 for FPR testing. In addition, sometimes Dennis Black will also be available for Xbox One uh, testing, but it's not his main uh, forte. Now, an FPR test does not really take long. Excuse me. FPR takes takes anywhere between, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. It's basically just kind of like a, a mock match. We, we take you through a match. We don't put the pedal to the metal. And we just kind of tell you what to do, what not to do, and give you some advice. And basically, it's very simple. Uh, you have to be a complete idiot to fail it. If you follow the, the cost stat guides uh, to the T, you should have no problem. If you watched the FPR video that's uh, further down, you'll have no problem at all. So it's it's very it's very very simple. It's very simple to you know get there. So basically, all you got to do is uh, you know once you clear from FPR testing, you will then be you will then upload your call to uh, whatever server you're on, whether it's Xbox One or or PS4. Doesn't matter. You upload your call and contact Casada for testing and approval. It's right here. There's a there's a link there, so you can reach out to Cassie Hayes as well. I would recommend not doing that as long as your car is uploaded you just let him know it's uploaded don't bother him about it because he will not be a pleasant person to you he's good at his job but he's also you know himself so please uh nope if you're flagged this is also new if you're flagged uh you'll be asked to fix your car and your car will need to be re-uploaded before anything's done so please if you are if you made a mistake fix it immediately re-upload your car let cassidy and staff know that you re-uploaded your stuff so we can take a look at it again. Once everything is cleared, you head on over to the signature finisher thread. Boom. And, uh, that, you know, from there, you basically pick your finisher and SIG. I'm sure there's going to be some times when you're going to notice, oh, my God, someone has my RKO. Too, too bad. I don't. If you're a rookie, this is more for a rookie. I, I don't care. I don't care if you came from, you know, Bob's wrestling future. 
and the RKO you you was was your fit. I don't care if it's claimed, it's claimed. Deal with it. Uh, some people might be nice if they don't want to be nice, and if they don't want to give you a permission to use it, you know you got to deal with it. That's it. I I don't care. There's literally hundreds of moves to choose from. You can make something your own. We had a guy that made chin locks famous for Christ's sakes. So please bear with it. Deal with it. Um. Again, make sure you familiar side, familiar size, familiarize yourself with the handbook. Don't fear, don't be afraid to ask any questions, especially rules and you know other stuff like that. If anything, let us know. If you have any questions, please contact Dennis Black, type your history, please Stacy Clark, Bloom, or even Mr. Sensation. Uh, again, now you can take part of Rider Turmoil. It's super easy. You would not be booked uh, to compete on a show if you didn't follow the above in addition to not being a lazy turd. So yeah, if you're lazy, bumba clot, you know, nothing's going to happen for you. Okay, here we made uh, Fair Play Rules. We made some significant changes, um, but it's not too big. It's just mo more clarification. I'm going to try it again. I'm trying to go through this as quickly as possible because it's already looking at 15 minutes. This is more, for, you know, informational stuff. Again, we'll go through this in a similar quick fashion video, but for now, we're just going to do it the old school way. Okay, so you already know about red and yellow, so nothing needs to be said about that. We did make uh, some changes regarding, uh, you know, some things, and I'll tell you right now. Uh, da, 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 that's the same. That's the same. Okay. When your opponent is on the ground, you can either use four stomps slash strikes, one ground grapple, one strong strike, or one springboard attack. Now, it used to be three and three, three, uh, three stomps, three strikes. The new game actually auto reverses on four, so you get an extra stomp for 0.5% damage. Or an extra strike, if so, to reset in order to get the person to auto stand up. And that's to help with match flow and to help with resets. Uh, the new issue that we're going to talk about real quick is do not abuse corner mechanics on debuffed opponents. What does this mean? This means that if you get a major in the first two minutes of a match, uh, the meta used to be throwing the person, you know, tagging the person up with a couple strikes, whipping the person into the corner, tagging them up with a pl bunch of strikes, lifting them up, hitting them a couple times again uh, on the top turnbuckle, and then doing a turnbuckle attack. Don't do that. The same rules apply for the, um, you know, when the opponent's down. So if you whip them into the corner, you do your three, and then, uh, you know, you're done. Uh, actually, to be clar to clarify on that, you can do, like, some strikes and then, the turnbuckle attack, but again, don't abuse it. Just, just use you know, please. Don't make it crazy. Don't make it a thing. Uh, do not spam. Pick up grapples. Use a moderation. That's pretty much you know the given. The new one is do not abuse kneeling and sitting and stun mechanics. Use a moderation or watch a show. Basically, again, the meta. Some people were going ham when you were kneeling or sitting. Uh, myself included. I'm gonna try to fall back on that and stun mechanics. We don't really mind stun moves. Um, just you know. Use them sporadically. Use them uh, smart, intelligent. If everything you have is a stun move, you're a dick and you will not be booked. So be smart. Okay. You can false pin with the D-pad down throughout the match. Do it for flavor. Sometimes you notice in older OCW matches, um, a guy will hit like a weird move and then go for a pin and then just kind of break the pin himself. And it's like, huh? That's basically to keep, you know, that's basically because the guy can't kick out. He's trying to give him the benefit of the doubt. We do that from time to time to make our matches look good. Uh, unfortunately, doing that makes the match not look good, but some people can't kick out, kick out of simple things. So now you have the D-pad down, so hit that. Make the match look good. Communicate, as always. Um, zero tolerance on pickup into a finisher. Don't do that. You will be executed on the spot. Uh, what else? We made some changes. Ah, yes. Another change that I... Uh, here we go. Do not use OMG moves. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Do not use omg moves until your opponent is orange this used to be until your opponent is red we changed that because again we want our matches to be fun quick hyper not hyper but you know relatively action-packed and you know not snooze fest so orange and orange uh an omg it's a high risk high reward reward be meaning you can do a, a metric ton of damage and get them red uh risk in the fact that it's really easy to counter and it can lead you in a very bad spot. So, you know, use with discretion, use your noodle, and it's up to you, okay? Not many changes here. Da, 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 da. Oh yes, tag and multi-man match is another change, significant change. Now then, uh, 
when it comes to ending a match in a tag or multi-man match, basically, it's just one, you know, when your opponent has the one red body part. That's the only time you can finish a match. Now, the changes between this year and last year are the following. Multi-man matches can end with a quick pin, dirty pin, roll-up, move, pinning combination, as long as the finisher has been successfully hit on a red opponent. All damaged opponents are eligible to be pinned, eliminated once a successful impact finisher has been hit on anyone in the match. Do not be thirsty. What does this mean? Okay. Let's say me, Bob, uh, no, how about easy, easy. Me, Dupree, and Dennis Black are in a match. I have decided to become red in my head because they keep kicking me and kneeing me in my head and I don't like it. And now Dupree decides to hit me with a backfire. Boom. At that point, if I kick out, you know, anyone else who's red is open season. So if Dennis Black happens to get red, you know, from uh, uh, any kind of damage after I'm red, he can al now also be hit with a finisher or whatever to be pinned as well. Now, we're doing this for the sake of, of brevity. We're going to see how it turns out. If it turns into a cluster fuck of thirstiness, we're going to have to reel it back. But I hope that you guys can use your common sense and try not to be thirst buckets. I know that sometimes if you if you mention a couple things like oh, opportunity or championship, people get crazy. But use your noodle. Anyone can always get a rematch. But being a thirst bucket is a bad look. So again, this is to help to give it a frenzied pace, basically, to make it seem like you don't have to focus on that one red guy. Now anybody's is, is fair game, and it can lead to kind of more uh, uh, unique and dramatic moments, you know, heel turns or whatever. So use sporadically. Okay. Tag matches, basically. The way tag matches work is more or less the same thing, except the only difference is that both, both the champion and... And uh, the non-champions only get one attempt to, to kick, uh, to break a pin. That's it. You know, we simple sick. We don't want 20-minute ladder match. I mean, 40-minute uh, tag matches. So, no. No more. Uh, winning and losing. This is, uh, you know, this is a doozy. So, here, I'll break it down for you. Most of it's the same, but this is what I added personally. So, if you are hit with three consecutive unanswered finishes, i.e. you didn't reverse or counter three finishes in a row, let it go. Put the controller down. I'm not going to waste 77 minutes of my goddamn life watching you no self finisher after finisher after finisher in a nine title match on Riot, Turmoil, or who gives a rat's ass indie show. Put the goddamn controller down. You lost. You have to fight another day, another goddamn day. Seriously, if you can reverse three finishes, practice, get better. It's it's okay. It's fine. Don't worry about it. I'll get you a rematch. It's, it's no big deal. Do not test my goddamn patience. Thank you. Love you. Bye. So, yeah. Uh... This wasn't in stone for the last two seasons. It is now. We have different options like time limits. But again, if we're time limit, it might make people thirsty. I don't want to have to force people to, you know, auto lose. But it's simple. The idea that we had before where once you hit impact finish, you can end the match, you know, in any kind of dramatic fashion. That was to, to circumvent this issue. But people still want to make sure they hit a finisher before match ends, which is fine. So this is basically to help that as well. So if you are hit with three in a row, just let it go. And now if you don't, you're going to hear my goddamn mouth. It's it's okay, dude. You can take take a L. It's, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't embarrass yourself. Be humble. Be loyal. Thank you. And uh, yeah, you know, basically the, the rules have pretty much remained the same as far as role playing goes. Uh, general player expectations that remain the same either way i need you all to just check out the handbook one more time and the thread will be posted mark out that you see the changes mark out that you understand the changes and i i might even need you to sign off that you read and understand the changes because it doesn't matter if you're a veteran a legend young or old the new stuff is out there if you do not see it if you do not apply it it's gonna leave me very angry because that means you don't care and you know so the video is to help you out. Watch it. Don't watch it. Up to you. But the handbook has now been updated. So please check that out. And that's going to do it for me. I will leave you quickly with some screenshots of the new arenas right now. Bang. Isn't that pretty? That's the anniversary show. Uh, that's a work in progress. They're going to fix uh, the matte textures, rather, the uh, apron textures. 
And uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much gonna do it for me. I just wanted to thank you, dudes, for uh, taking the time and do that rather listening. It's been about twenty four minutes. Sorry, wanted to go sh- shorter, but you know how it is. Also note that the thirteenth anniversary show, which you're actually looking at right now, um, the card will be posted tomorrow, or rather today, which is the twenty second. So yeah, the, the card will be posted. Card subject to change. If you're not booked, you know, write on the show, do something for the show, and that's pretty much it. Just you know, we're trying to do the best we can for you guys. It's it's a process. There's a lot of moving parts, and the most important thing is you guys have to you know speak. So let us know what you think. If you like this video, like, subscribe, tell your friends, rate, you know, inquire about the O C W and all that good stuff. And uh, that's gonna do it for me. So thank you for listening. And in the words of the immortal Raffle Simmons, thank you. God bless and good night. Oh yeah, let me put this one up too, because I like the screen. It makes me happy. Boom. Boom. Look at that. Yeah. Thank you. Have a good night. Stop recording now. Now stop, please. Stop.